What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton and the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, we started to hunt for Claudia, um, Lady Dahlia's cat that has run amok throughout the town, and we solved quite a few fun puzzles, in my opinion at least, and in this episode we're going to continue our chase of Claudia. I did start the episode again with another one of those, the story so far segments. I don't know if you guys want me to include those or not, maybe? Maybe that's actually something that you guys would find really helpful, so I'll try including it next time. I don't know if you guys noticed it was absent this time, but I guess, regardless, um, we were going to click on Claudia here and see what's going on. Are we about to catch Claudia or what? Aha! Fluffy check! Purple bow, or purple bow, check. Sullen expression, check. No doubt about it, that's Claudia. Good eye, Luke. Now that we've located her, the question at hand is how to go about catching her. Leave this one to me, Professor. <laughs> ah, yes, I'd forgotten that you have a way with animals. Well, go right ahead, then. Is this gonna work well, or is it gonna be a puzzle? Here, Claudia. Here, girl. Yikes. <laughs> that did not sound like it was gonna turn out very well for Luke. And off Claudia goes. Luke, are you alright? You can see the scratches on his left cheek. I'm sorry it wasn't much help, Professor. She's far feistier than I imagined. Alright, so... We must, uh... Continue moving about, right? So we'll head to the left this time. We haven't gone to the left before, I believe. Oh, I almost forgot. We ought to visit the local inn and see if we can't procure some rooms for the night. Sounds good to me, Professor. I was certain I saw an inn near the entrance to the village, just south of the plaza we're in. Let's head over right now and see if we can't set up some lodging. Well, I wonder where we have to go next. Oh wait, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You weren't there before. What? Deaky? Yawn. Hmm? Yeah, I saw that cat. She almost scratched out your eye. Help catch her, you say? Thanks, but no thanks. I like living. Did you see that ferocious beast? I'm not going anywhere near her. Could you at least tell us in which direction she ran off? <laughs> I saw the killer scurry off westward. She had fangs the size of daggers. Yikes. Not very promising, but alright. So we're gonna head to the south first and see if we can get a room at the inn. Any, any coins? There are. Nice, so we'll head into the inn. And see what we have going on here. Man, the, the character designs in this game are so funny. So we'll talk with you and see what's going on. Beatrice. Oh, hello there. General Kenobi. <laughs> Welcome to the inn at St. Mister. We're the only inn in town, you know. You see, visitors to our little village are quite rare. Ah, good day, madam. We seek lodging for the night. Do you have any open rooms we could rent? Oh, my stars. What terrible timing. We're currently remodeling all of our guest rooms. The only rooms left are in the attic, but if you don't mind that, I'll make sure you're very comfortable. I do hope you'll stay with us. It's been a while since a fine gentleman such as yourself stayed with us. The rooms are, ahem, not very big, but I'll make sure they sparkle. Can you come back in a bit? Oh, and I'll do my best to get two normal rooms ready for you as soon as possible. Oh, thank you, but you needn't try to yourself, trouble yourself on my behalf. As long as I have a bed to sleep in, I'm satisfied. Low maintenance. Professor Layton. Ah, yes, about that. Oh, what terrible luck. You see, all the beds are out being refinished. Great, but don't worry, Mama Beatrice is going to take good care of you two. I'll even drop the nightly rate. The inn option has been added to the trunk. The inn is a puzzle in which you arrange items in Luke's and the Professor's rooms. To access it, touch the trunk icon, then touch the inn icon. When you obtain a new item for Luke and the Professor, you'll be asked where you want to put it. Interesting. You can always rearrange your items, so don't worry too much about where you first put an item. If one of your rooms is too full to take on new items, the item will go to the room with available space. Here's something to make the place feel a bit more like home. So we got a lacquered stool. We'll give it to... We'll give it to Luke for now, I guess. The item went to Luke. Interesting. Oh, apparently this mirror? Or whatever this was on the wall? <laughs> is a puzzle. Look, a hidden puzzle! 112? My beloved. Worth 50 picarats. Oh my. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Move the different sections of the picture around with your stylus. Okay. 
Touch the arrow icons to rotate picture sections when you form the answer to the submit. Okay. So a work from a famous artist was recently discovered. The painting is a self-portrait of the painter in his later years and is entitled My Beloved. Assuming the artist wasn't a huge narcissist and referring to himself, his beloved should appear in the painting somewhere. Can you find his beloved? Interesting. If I had to guess, his beloved is maybe like a, a dog or something? Is it related to the shadows? Oh, it totally is. It totally is. Um, let's see here. Let's start off by doing this. This seems like we're on the right track, right? If we just focus on the, the black section. Hmm. I can rotate, right? Oh, that's how that works, I see. So what if we rotate this guy? Um, because I'm fairly confident this is what we should be aiming for, right? What if I were to do that? Hmm. I mean, it could be, I'd imagine it's possible that it could just be a, a reimagining is it possible to reset the picture? No, it doesn't seem so, unfortunately. I'm curious as to how this all fits together. I, I feel like it's gotta be a dog. <laughs> That's my initial impression. But this doesn't, you know, strike me as something immediately. Hmm. What if I rotate that? This way? No. I'm just trying to see how I can get maybe certain aspects to line up well. Maybe it's supposed to be like a woman? Possibly. We could switch these two and then do that and see how that looks. But I feel like... I feel like it's gonna be a dog. <laughs> or have I already gotten it, you know? Maybe that's it? Sideways? <laughs> but I thought that was what I'd already, you know, depicted, right? Hmm. I'm not entirely convinced. That looks more on point, actually. Let's. <laughs> For the sanity of us all, let's rotate this a little bit so we can actually put things in terms um, that are, or look at things a little bit more reasonably. I think this is it. The way I see it, I mean, I see two ears and a face-like structure attached to a neck. Um, I feel like it would be a dog. Because hmm. I don't I don't really see it being anything else. Maybe maybe what if we reverse these two? No, that's not gonna work with the uh, with the neck. This looks like it lines up to me. Is it upside down? I don't think so. Is this supposed to be a cat, too? I feel like this is it, but I don't want to get it wrong. I mean, yeah, this, this lines up too well for it to not be it, is more so what I'm thinking now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. I think I've got it. Let's hope we're right. Oh no, we were wrong. Oh, I was sure I had it. Darn. All right, well, well, we'll try again. Darn, we're already, we're losing pick rats, guys. Okay, 45 out of 50. Hmm. 
So we'll work with this again. I feel like this is a, a correct picture, but I guess, I guess not, right? <laughs> um, how else could I rearrange this then? I feel like it has to do with this bottom part, if anything. Right? Like something like that. Is that maybe it? I don't know. Maybe maybe this bottom right section, as currently shown, is like a top hat of some sort. And so I'll need this to go up here. And then I could go over here and, and rotate this that way. Oh, that's totally it. That's the head of a woman. Yeah, that's totally it. I thought it was gonna be like a dog. At least let me know in the comment section if you at least saw what I saw in the very first attempt. I thought it might be a woman, but I thought it was like an animal or something too. But no, this is this is absolutely it. <laughs> My first impression is that it would be a woman, but then I was like, I saw the pet. I saw a dog or I saw a cat. And I was like, that could be it. Oh, I should have seen that it was supposed to be a hat. Regardless, uh, we, we did solve that eventually. That's right, the silhouette of the artist's true love was hidden in, this paint, in his painting. The painting must have been a tribute to his love for her. Or for himself. <laughs> Easy peasy. Now let's go find some more puzzles. Okay. We'll continue the hunt. Anything in there? Nice hint coin. How about over there? There? Nope. How about there? Nope. How about the chair? Nope. Can we go in this room? I think I smell bread baking back there. And then... The stairs to the second floor, where can we go? Oh, so we can't actually go anywhere. It's just that one puzzle, for now at least. Okay. We'd better get back to searching for Claudia, Professor. Yeah, that is a good idea. Um, we've already tried going in. Have we tried going in here? No, can't. Okay. Then I guess we're all right for the time being. Anything else of interest? No? Not for now, at least. Where are we trying to go? We're trying to go back forward and then to the left is what they said. Or rather, westward. Which is to the left in this case. So we've got some new individuals here who seem rather, rather heated. Let's get ourselves a hint coin and check out what's going on. Because it doesn't seem like too much good stuff is happening. Polly is very upset. Oh, I have just had it this time. I think we're going to explode. You look like you're going to explode. Like a water balloon filled with rage. What's that? Why am I angry, you ask? Why am I angry? <laughs> Lend me an ear, will you, guy? There are these three bozos in town, and we just can't stand each other. It's so bad that none of us want to see each other's ugly mugs, but St. Mysterio ain't a big place, right? Sometimes we cross paths on the way to work, and just like that, bam, time for a screaming match. Doesn't sound like a recipe for success. <laughs> I sure do wish we could find a way to keep from bumping into each other in the mornings. Ah, so we're gonna have to plan some routes. Hang on now, you look like you got a good head on your shoulders. <laughs> that smile though. Do a guy a favor and help me with this. We've encountered our next puzzle, friends. Puzzle number 20, unfriendly neighbors. 50 pick rats. Draw a path between one man's home and his work by connecting matching blocks. Okay. The catch is that these men can't stand each other, so you have to make sure that none of the paths touch. To make a path, all you need to do is tap a block and start drawing. Okay. So. Interesting. So, we can't go... I'm looking at this lower right A. That's The lower right A and the upper right C are what's going to, in my opinion, provide a lot of restriction on the puzzle. Because D can't go around C, right? Um, without essentially cutting off... Oh, they could do a sort of interesting pattern, right? Where if I were to do something like this, connect D that way... Mm, nope, that cuts off C potentially. So we'll, we'll clear that. Oh, but I don't necessarily even have to do that. Nope, come on. We can go like this. And then 
C will have to come around on the outside like that and then A can go along ooh nope this is where this is where we run into issues A can't get there so that's not the solution um so let's let's take a look at some connectivity right Is it going to be something like B going around this way to them there, and then C taking the outside route? Because either way, I mean, somebody's going to end up taking this outside route. We don't need to go all the way over there, but I guess in the end, that's not really going to make too much of a difference. And then again, we're left with this stuck pattern. So I can't... Hmm. I think I should instead focus on A to start. Taking this sort of an inner path. Hmm. Even then though, that's not going to prove too useful because in order to get both D and C over there, I would need to use the same path. So that's not going to work. Yeah, again, I think I should start off with this res more restricted A. If A takes the outside route, because realistically it's going to need to in some regard, because otherwise it'll it'll cut off B and D. I really do think A is going to have to take this outside route. And then we'll have to work on things from there. C cannot go around D on the left, so C must go around... Oh, I, I see it. I see it. So C, yeah, must go around D on the right, and then up there, and then again, oh wait, no, but there's that gap there. Oh, that's proving to be so annoying. That <laughs> between A and B in the top left, that extra space there, that lack of a road makes a huge difference. We could have, you know, D otherwise go up here, but that's going to be problematic. Unless... Oh, I see. Can I bring this back? I can. Um... Hmm... What do I want to do here? Oh, wait, no, that's not what I wanted to do. So A is going to have to go around on the inside of D. And then go around like this. And that way D can come around here. And then B can go like that. Luke, here's my answer. Whew. That one definitely required critical more critical thinking. <laughs> but I'm glad we got through that one. That's right, now those guys don't even have to look at each other. Good job. Yeah, so part of it was just thinking in terms of if I have to go around something, am I going to completely cut something off, right? So that's why I decided I can't do that with the right and A. And then, so I had to go down and left. And then the question is, well, if I go around the left of D, I no longer have much of an option for, I only have the option to go around D on the right. So that would be occupied by C. But then, how do I get D connected? Um, and then, obviously, well, you guys saw the process. <laughs> you guys saw the process of how it progressed. Um, but that's actually a really, that was a really neat logic puzzle. I like that one a lot. 
Aw, oh, thanks a million, guy. I can finally get to work without blowing my stack. I really mean it, pal. You're a lot smarter than you look. Aw, thanks, Polly. Oh yeah, let me clue you in. See that big old mess of a tower behind the town square? Take a tip from me. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay away from that thing. Well, right then, I'm off. <laughs> Thanks again, buddy. So naturally, we know where we're going. We found a strange gizmo. What is that? Hmm. I don't know. He still looks rather upset, unfortunately. There's that lady there. What does this say? It's the menu for the restaurant. Okay, we've got ourselves a hint coin. Um, so there's a tower. Where did he say the tower was? Is it not the Ferris wheel, but ter tower behind the um, square, I think? That we're supposed to stay away from, potentially? Either way, let's talk to this lady. Who's been waiting patiently as we helped Polly. Sorry to trouble you, madam, but have you seen a white cat running by? A white cat? Ah, uh, yes, it ran over that way, toward the park. I may ask, what are you planning on doing with it once you find it? We are going to take it back to Lady Dahlia. It's her cat, and she's asked us to bring it back to her. Ha ha ha, and you're going to try and catch that, care that cat barehanded? Oh, good heavens. That's a bit naive, don't you think? Listen here, cats love treats, so try luring it over with some food. What do you suggest? I've got some old fish bones around here that I'm sure the little thing would go wild over. Be happy to give them to you if you solve this puzzle for me. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Not that I mind. Pig pen partitions. Okay. Seven prize winning pigs are lazing about in a pen. To make sure that the pigs don't fight with each other, you've decided to section off the pen with three ropes. Can you hitch the ropes up to some of the posts shown below and separate each pig from its neighbor? Remember, not even a snout or a curly tail can sneak over each partition. So we have three ropes, right? Oh, I think I see it. Drag the stylus from one point to another, draw a line when you're finished. Okay. So what we're going to do to start is go from here to, let's say here. Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll go like here to here. Yeah. And then we can go here to here. Oh wait, no, that's not going to work because of these two being in the same pen. But I'm pretty sure that's the idea. Um, what's a better way to do this? If I move this one from here to here, we have used three ropes and we've penned them all off. No, almost all of them. So not quite. And the ropes are straight lines, <laughs> which matters. So we're close, definitely close. could try to do something similar with that and then something like this oh but that's gonna go over like that so we'll need to do that and then no that's not gonna be enough it'll be close but still not quite enough I was thinking we could maybe do from like here to here but yeah like I said that's gonna put two of them there We only have three ropes, right? And there can be no pig next to its neighbor. Not even a snout or curly tail can sneak over each partition. Okay, so they're very clear about those instructions. Let's think through this again. Oh. I've got an idea. We need to basically make ropes that go around the one in the center while partitioning the other ones. So if we were to do something like that, and then, didn't I already do this though? That, and then, ah, that's not gonna be enough still. I was gonna say something like that or this but that's still not going to be enough. 
See how these ropes interact in such a way that we've made a triangle in the center? We need to construct the rope such that that triangle encompasses the pig in the center. So let's try and do that. We do something like that, and then that. Um, We obviously need to do it in such a way that the other gets split up effectively. I feel like it might need to be one where we have these two connected. And then do something like that. Nope, that's not going to work. Nope. If I already tried this combination, this should work. I think that'll do it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. No no tails, no ears overlapping. That top right one is looking pretty close, but I'm uh I'm going to go with it, I think. What happens if I try and change this? Is it always going to be rooted there? It is. Okay. So it's not something I can change with my touchpad. All right. We'll submit it. There we go. There we go. Nice, and we got it. Every puzzle has an answer. <laughs> Good job. You've made a lot of pigs very happy. <laughs> and apparently this old lady too, so I'm happy with that. I must say, I'm very impressed. Here you go then, some fish bones, as I promised. Good luck with that cat. So we got some fish bones, and we're, we're doing well. Um, so now we have this lady here. Who are you? Adria. Tee hee hee. That guy gets so worked up that he turns red like a tomato. He looks so dumb. She's some sort of gossiper or what? What's what's her deal? Um, well, I kind of want to see what's going on in this restaurant. The menu is on the outside. But who are you and what do you have to say? Flick. So I hear you two are into puzzles. I can tell. It's obvious from the way you're ogling those coins. <laughs> you can smell it, can't you? Well, you're right. There's a puzzle in these coins. Have a look. Here's our next puzzle, guys. <laughs> I mean, I equilateral triangle. Ooh, we're we gonna get some gonna get some math going. In the drawing below, ten coins are arranged to form an equilateral triangle. The triangle is pointing up right now, but can you get it to point down by moving three of the coins? So we move the coins around by sliding them with your stylus. When you're satisfied with your position, tap the submit icon. And we can only move three. Ah. Uh, I see. So, actually, yeah. What we need to do is this. We'll move this coin up here. We'll probably want to line that up a little bit better. But we'll move that one up there. Can we move this a little bit closer? Okay, yeah. Let's, let's get this in line a little bit. Maybe a little bit further out. Yeah, that's good. And then we move this guy down here. Cool. It's definitely pointing down now. There we go. Awesome. Another puzzle solved. <laughs> that's right. The interesting thing about this puzzle is the way the whole triangle changes shape with the simple shifting of a few coins. The trick is to think about the corners on the first triangle, and it's easy to see the changes you need to make. Yep, it's just as I thought. You guys are a bunch of puzzle nuts. <laughs> Much like everyone in this town, apparently. Found a strange gizmo. We're getting all these gizmos. St. Mysterious is full of puzzle lovers like you two, but not all of them are nice like me. Watch your back. <laughs> okay. We'll be extra careful. I could sure go for some juice right about now. Hint coin in there. What about up there? How about over here? What's this here? Oh, that's a hint coin. Chairs, business looks slow right now, I agree. All right, let's chat with you. See what you have to say. Any puzzles for us? Is his name Crouton? <laughs> hey, is this your first time here? Or this is your first time here, isn't it? Well, if you're looking for a warm meal and a hot cup of tea, you've come to the right place. Strange it should be so empty if the food's as good as you say. Hey now, boy, no need to be snippy. <laughs> That's just how the restaurant business is. There are times when the place is packed and times when things are quiet. If it was always the lunch rush, how would I ever prepare food for the rest of the day? That's a good point. 
Oh, and speaking of preparation, I've got myself a little problem on my hands. Oh, sounds like a problem for the, I don't know, I was about to call them like the, the puzzle solvers or the something like that, but I can't come up with an interesting name for them. You see, I've got to divide this eight quart pitcher of juice into two equal portions. However, for the life of me, I can't seem to find my measuring cup. I wonder if there's some way I could do it using these five and three quart pitchers I found. I see. Juice pitchers. 40 picarats. Okay, here we have an eight quart pitcher filled with juice, an empty five quart pitcher, and an empty three quart pitcher. The pitchers are unmarked, and your task is to divide the eight quarts of juice so that both the five part, the five quart pitcher and the eight quart pitcher are each holding exactly four quarts. Gotcha. Touch a pitcher to pick it up. To move its contents, tap the pitcher where you'd like the liquid to go. Okay. So, no matter what I do, I'm gonna split this into five and three, right? So I can um, put it here, and naturally I'll have three left in this, five over here. Now I can bring this, and I can actually portion it yet again into two and three and three. So then what I can do is actually bring the three over to this three, make it six, and then pour it into this one until it's full. Oh wait, no, that's five. Darn it. <laughs> that's, I almost, I thought we were almost done. All right, well, we can get back to that same. Oh, it's counting how many moves I have. I don't like that. <laughs> um, so we'll move this here and we have our three, two, and three. The three is full, the five has three space, and the, th the current three has um, five quarts of space. So what we are gonna want to do is I think again, pour the three into there, so we have six. And then, well no, it's then we end up back at the same, hmm. How do I want to do this? I need to think in terms of what like operations I can do and how that you know creates things. Um, if I need four, right? I need to not fill the five quart, and I need to. What's the end goal? An empty three. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's the. Hmm. So I need to get the five quart pitcher to a state where it is one, it's filled with one quart. Right? No, actually. Huh. That's actually really interesting. Okay, so if we do this, and then bring the five over here, we can then, where do we wanna put the two? It's not gonna to make too much of a difference. I have to do something with the three, which is why I feel like it has to be the three into there. But that doesn't help a lot because we'll still end up with a three and a five in the end regardless, right? <laughs> if I try to think backwards, right? My final move needs to be pouring one pitcher into another in such a way that they're both left with four. And that's not... I can get to this stage. This is, this is definitely the important stage here. But how do I get something other than five and three, right? I can break up the five and three, and then I can go from that to three, two, and three. Now I need to construct other numbers I can work with. And I can get a six and a two. Oh, I see, I see. We're gonna restart real quick. Um, we'll pour into the five, and we can pour the five into here. Now, again, like I had before, I can do this and pour the six into there, but now I can transfer the two over to the three, and that way I can make a five in this one, and I can, I have, like, I can shave off one from something 
by pouring into this last cup, right? So now if I pour the six into the five, I have one remaining here. Now I pour the five into this one, I'll have four in here and then I can pour the three into this one. And then we are set. And that should be the minimum number of moves it. necessary too. Awesome. Critical thinking is the key to success. <laughs> well done. If you keep at it long enough, you're sure to come across the solution. The shortest possible solution requires seven moves. These liquid distribution problems have been around for ages and have even been spotted in Japanese texts from hundreds of years ago. Oh, how cool. Very cool. Ah, so that's how it's done. Great thinking. Thanks a lot. If I ever have trouble like this again, would you mind if I call on you for help? We've got another gizmo. Very similar to the gizmo we just got. So it's interesting to know that we can get multiples of gizmos. And now, I guess, out of curiosity, I do want to take a look. We obviously haven't taken a look at too many of these. Um, I want to take a look at the gizmo section. The gizmos you've gathered around St. Mysterio are all lined up on the touch screen. Tap one to snap it into place. Just what are you constructing, you ask? <laughs> That's a secret. Okay. So this looks like a robot dog, for what it's worth. Um, these look like paws. Can I... Oh, okay. Oh, you just tap them and they'll go into place. Interesting. So I don't actually really need to think too hard about where they're going, but... Good to know. It's pretty cool. And then there's the painting. Touch a piece of the painting to go to a screen where you can place your selected piece. You can also enter the placement screen by tapping the yellow arrow at the top of the selection screen. Return to the selection screen from the placement screen anytime by tapping switch. Move pieces on the placement screen with your stylus. Grab the piece in the circle that appears to slide. Okay. Gotcha. 20 pieces. Hmm. Something good will happen, cool. So there are 20 pieces, that's at least worth noting. And there's not gonna be anything we can do at this point. So we're gonna not worry about that for now. There's a journal, there's the inn where we can rearrange things. Very cool, very cool. Is there anything else left for us here? Can we go through this door? We can, and it leads back out here. Can we go in here? Not gonna open, how about here? How about here? Nope. Okay, so we can either go Straight or to the right? To the right is back where we were initially, so we'll go straight. And we have Claudia yet again. What kind of loud just throws garbage wherever he pleases? Yeah, that's gross. Not a, not a fan of the whole littering thing. <laughs> that filthy jar reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Nice transition. <laughs> Bottle full of germs. Okay, 20 pick rats. A glass jar holds a single germ. After one minute, the germ splits into two germs. One minute after that, the two germs each split again, forming a total of four germs. Continuing at this rate, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. Knowing this, how long in minutes would it take to fill the jar if you had started with two germs? So I think the you would generally think, oh, it's um, going to be half the time, right? But really... What you're skipping is that first minute of division, right? That first um, multiplication, rather. So it should take 59 minutes, is my initial impression. Because if you, if you look at it in terms of, okay, I have one germ, and it takes me an hour, right? 60 minutes of replication to fill the entire jar. Instead, if you start at the two mark, you say, okay, it takes one minute to go from each step from one you know, stage to the next. So I'm skipping that first stage and thus it'll take one minute fewer than it would have um, initially. So because I think you're only skipping one replication, you're only skipping one minute. So I really think it's gonna take 59 minutes. Is there anything else? I mean, I could obviously brute force calculate it in a sense, right? Takes 60 minutes of replicating to do that. Yeah, I, um, I'm gonna go with 59. So let's let's give it a go. Germs are looking cute over there. <laughs> Love the art style here. Yeah, let's give it a go. Maybe there's something obvious I I'm missing, but... 
Awesome. Professor, I've sold it. The answer is 59 minutes. It takes one minute for a single germ to split into two. Therefore, starting with two germs instead of one only saves you one minute. All right, you're spot on. Excellent job. This jar is actually kind of neat. Why don't we take it with us? But my boy, it's covered in grime. Hmm, what's this? Something's hidden inside the jar. I think you're right. Luke, reach a hand in and see what's inside, will you? It's covered in grime, but... Oh, a painting scrap. Awesome, so we have three out of the 20 painting scraps already. That's awesome. And we've found Claudia again. So that'll be our next thing. I would imagine Claudia's probably going to run into the park. Uh, so we have quite the chase out of us. But that chase is going to have to continue in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely some fun puzzles. One that gave me a little bit of trouble. But... Yeah, definitely, definitely very cool. I'm glad we got to take a look at the painting section. I'm glad we got to look at the whole gizmo construction as well. And that's pretty neat. Again, this game has so much character, and it's so addicting. Every single time I end an episode, I want to jump right back into it, to the point that I feel like my voice is becoming a limiting factor at this point. But I hope you guys are enjoying it just as much as I am. But until the next episode, this is Movie Night Zero, and this mission is complete.